What is up YouTube? Team Gun Knight here giving you a deck profile. Today it is the Brawler's Nurakami Archetype. Nurakami Arch Brawler deck profile, take six. We've been trying to give you this deck for a while, but first two times the recording was lost, the next two times the camera died. So, we're trying this now. This is the first video we're doing today. <laughs> Not the quick and the full audience. Yeah, so here we go. So this deck's been making the waves. Um, when we first tried to do this deck, it was a lot more relevant in the meta, but um, in English meta, it's seeing less play, Japanese meta, it's seeing less play. Um, not because it's bad, it's just because other people like playing other decks because of... Because of... People just like playing other decks because of personal choice. So, this deck is still 100% usable in this meta, so... And thankfully, we don't need much out of set 5 when it comes out, so... Alright, let's get started. Your starter is Sport Kid, Draco Kid? Or Sport Kid, Dragoon. Sorry. He is the grade 3 searcher for Nurakami. Count him as 1, put him in soul, check top 5. Grab any grade 3 from among them, put him in your hand for the rest of the deck shuffle. Just a typical card. Um, I wouldn't advertise playing any other starter in this deck other than Lizard Soldier Saishin, the guy who can retire grade 2s on boost, on a boosted hit. He's. It depends on how frustrating certain starters are in your meta and the decks that you play at your local. Otherwise, Spark Kid is perfectly fine. Going on to the triggers, not much to really talk about here. I like Carbuncles, so four green gem. Four blue gem. Four yellow gem. And he's not, and this is the ugly Carbuncle. This is Malevolent Jin. You play him because he has an effect. It sometimes comes in handy with Chitaras and stuff like Pygloba because it allows you to conquest, put one of these in soul, target them, and make it a 31 column, which can mean a lot, early, uh, a lot late game. He's just your, he's your typical uh, Season 2 Marvel clone, back when they put this effect on uh, crit triggers instead of draw triggers. Yeah, I agree for draw triggers. Trigger lineup is just simple, 4 4 8, no reason to really change it. Stands. Uh, from what I understand, the stand works like with brawlers in the English meta because we don't have the an errata yet because it works differently in Japan, but I still wouldn't advertise playing the stands in this deck as you want your Vanguard to attack first all the time anyway. It's one of the few cards that's actually different from Japan and English is Dragon Dancer Vienna. Anyway, we're going to the grade ones. We have Dragon Dancer Anastasia, your Generation Perfect Shield, whenever you guard with her. If you have another copy in your drop zone upon resolution of her ability, you can unflip a damage and she can't be used to Perfect Shield rear guards, which is 100% fine in this deck. Um, there's a lot of controversy whether you should playing G decks or G shields in decks that uh, don't need them, simply because Laurel still hasn't been taken care of yet in English format. And the last thing you want is have one of these in hand, and then they smash your rear guard and just beat you in advantage. Other grade ones, we have Mighty Bolt Dra uh, Dragoon. He's the stride assister for Narakami. Whenever you discard him for a stride, he counts as uh, three grades, which is perfect. His first ability you don't have to worry about because we don't play Dragonic Vanquisher in this deck. But he's also just a good 7k uh, booster. Also, you play four of them because you want to max out for if you have to play against Mega Colony. Because you want to use your grade threes more for riding than striding. So having all having the full four count to stride all the time is great. Then we play um, a little bit of controversial things. We got uh, three Wyvern Stripe Pygloma. He is the generation grade one unit where he has a continuous ability where he cannot attack uh, rear guards ever unless he's on Vanguard. And when he's on rear guard, you generation break one. Whenever he attacks the Vanguard, he gains power plus four. So he's an 11k attacker on rear guard as long as you have GB1. Uh, really, really strong. He's kind of fighting for deck spaces between uh, Brawler Wild Clock, uh, Wild Clock Dragon because he is the Brawler 10k attacker, which is a little more usable in this meta as this guy has to wait for GB1, whereas Wild Clock doesn't. And he's a 10k all the time, whether he's attacking Vanguard or rear guard, and he can also attack rear guard. So it helps more against the grade two stay decks like Nova Grapplers, like Aqua Force, like Royal Paladins, uh, Tachikaze. It all depends on how you want to play. I like this guy just because I like as many 11k attackers in the Vanguard as possible. And to finish the deck off is two uh, Rising Phoenix. Many people don't play this guy either because of Turbo, because of his Soul Blast cost, and you don't really gain that much Soul in Brawlers. Nurkami's never been about big Souls. I still think he's useful enough though, especially in the Mega Colony deck, because it allows you to ride over a thing Soul Blast, two grade threes, or even a Legion pair, and then Legion them back into the deck. For other things, basically do that whole season four 
Legion, Legion, Ride, Soul Blast them, Legion them back, so you can just keep going over and over and over again. You can take this guy out, I wouldn't... I don't... Re He's nice as a nice one of even. You don't have to play two. I, this is just a deck that I've been running for a while and it's been working for me, so I've, I've been feeling no reason to change it. Upcoming meta might change that because of Aqua Forest and you want a little more rushy cards. So maybe he might become a one of, and that's where Wild Clocks probably come into the equation. Grade twos, you have Brawler, Big Bang, Slash Dragon, or Slash Buster rather. This guy is your primary, your primary lesion, and he is also the best grade two in this deck. His first ability is that whenever he attacks anything, as long as you have a Vanguard with Big Bang Knuckle in its card name, he gains power plus two. So he's an 11k attacker all the time, as long as you're on grade three, basically because all of our grade threes and higher are gonna have Big Bang in their name, Big Bang Knuckle in their name. And his bottom ability is that whenever your Vanguard with Big Bang Knuckle in its card name hits anything, Rear Guard Vanguard, it even means the multiple attacks. Each time your Vanguard with Big Bang Knuckle's name hits, he gains power plus 3,000 until end of turn. Super, super stupid. If you have Big Bang Knuckle Dragon, he can gain as much as nine. If you have Knuckle, he can gain as much as 12. If you have Turbo, he can gain as much as 18. Homes. Pretty dumb. I wish you could play stands in this deck, but it just doesn't work out that way because you gotta have you want your you want your Vanguard to attack first. So you just crit them to death. Yeah. This guy. This guy could be pulled down as a three of to, for a fourth copy of the next card I'll show you. But this is Demonic Dragon Berserker Chatara. He is the generation grade two unit for Nurakami and the basically the evolution of Pygloma. This guy's very similar. Um, he's an 8K with a continuous ability that this unit cannot attack rear guards as long as it's on rear guard. And its bottom ability, which is not GB, is that whenever it attacks the Vanguard, it gains power plus three. So again, an 11K attacker, always relevant unless it's against cross right backs. And it gains the ability that whenever it hits the Vanguard, you can kind of boss one, choose one card in your opponent's drop zone and bind it face up for the rest of the game. So basically you're just removing it from the game and you may draw a card. Note that if they do not have any cards in their drop zone, you can still counterblast one to just draw a card, which I recommend doing as, all the time as long as you have counterblast and you don't need them at that particular moment in time. The guy is just really good. I play him as a four up because I, again, I like 11k attackers. And again, you can take one of these guys out for the next card I'll show you and obviously there's a reason why, but I, for now I play four five. Four. And the next card that you could play four up instead of Chaitara is uh, Brawler Skyhound Dragon. I only play three of them just because I like Chaitara a lot. But this guy's ability is Counter Boss 1 whenever he's placed on Rear Guard. As long as you have a Vanguard with Brawler in its card name, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your opponent's Rear Guards in the front row and retire it. This guy sets up Conquest Dragon. He also allows you to pick a different attack target for Knuckles in late game in case there's multiple things you want to get rid of in the back row. So you can just use Knuckles' ability, call him, call some, kill something in the front row, and then use Knuckle to kill back row. Just a super, super good unit. I would rec I would not recommend playing any less than three. I would say three is the bare minimum you play of him, and then if you want, you can play four. Very, very solid unit in the deck. And then last off, we have Brawler, Big Bang, Slash, Dragon. This is the smaller version of Slash Buster. He doesn't gain the plus two passive whenever you have a Knuckle Vanguard, which is kind of sad. He's always a 9k. But the bottom ability is a little more usable as before you get the grade three. As it's whenever uh, your Vanguard with Brawler in its card name hits, he gains plus three for each time it hits. So if you have him on rear guard on grade two and you tackle Slash hits, he becomes a 12k attacker, which is good against uh, the 7k anti rush decks. Also, he's the secondary Legion for the deck. So you want to make sure you play at least one. Some people tell you to play um, at least two so you can always get the Legion off, but if you're having a Legion him, you're probably in a bad position. So you don't want to have that in your deck messing you up. Now we move on to Grade Threes, and the first main Legion of the deck, or the second main Legion of the deck, but you won't use him all the time, but he's a pretty good first stride, and that is Big Bang's, uh, Brawler, Big Bang's Knuckle Buster? Knuckle, yeah, Knuckle Dragon. Brawler, Big Bang, Knuckle Dragon. Yeah. For real. <laughs> so again, he Legions with no, uh, slash Dragon, the normal versions. His bottom ability is actually very useful if you ever play against decks who want to stay on grade two, because normally they're on a 9k Vanguard. His bottom ability is that whenever he attacks, you can Soul Blast one. If you do, he gains power plus 3,000 until end of turn, becoming a 14 attacker. 
This is very relevant because obviously that means a 10K is now a one pass rather than a two pass if you attack them boosting. It also allows you to soul blast perfect shields and slash dragons you may have had to ride up to this point so that when you legion, you can put them back. That's why you always have access to the best unit possible. And his legion ability is that while he's in legion, he has the ability to counter blast two cards with brawler in their name, so E special. And if you do that, he gains power plus 5,000 until end of turn, and the ability continuous that whenever he attacks on Vanguard, you choose up to th you choose your entire u opponent's front row and attack all those units in one attack. So basically, he's a vermilion for a little less cost, but you have to counter by specific things, and he gets more power. He's still just a nice, solid unit, but you want to play him, obviously, because you need Big Bang Knuckles to use Buster's ability, which I'll tell you about in a second. Just a good overall card, and having Big Bang in his name helps because of cards I'll talk about in a second. And then the final grade three of the deck, the main thing you'll be on all the time, this is Brawler, Big Bang, Knuckle, Buster. This guy legions with Slash Buster, obviously. His bottom ability is just a continuous that as long as you have Knuckle Dragon in your soul, he gains power plus 2,000 at all times, so he's a cross ride, which is very, very relevant in this meta still to this day. And his main Legion ability is that while he's in Legion, he gains the ability to Counter Blast 1, anything, not E-Special, Counter Blast 1. Choose any card in your hand with Big Bang Knuckle in its card name, meaning either Dragon or Buster, and put that unit into your soul. So note that you can put this in your soul, so you can self-cross ride. If you do that, he gains power plus 5,000 until end of turn, and the ability that whenever he declares an attack, choose four of your opponent's rear guards and attack them in one attack. Note, you have to attack four if there is four. It is not up to four. Let's see if WWE can you. It is not up to four. If your opponent has four rear guards, you attack all four. If they have less than four, then you just attack everything, obviously. This card is super, super strong. It was always strong even when it was released in Season 4. Its biggest problem was that it had no endgame. But other than that, the card is still really strong in this meta. A lot of decks now want their rear guards, and this guy tells you no. It's as simple as that. You just summed all of that up into one word. Yeah, the deck is just really, really strong. Then we go on to the strides. The first stride you're going to see is, is Lightning Dragon Knight Zorus. People would tell you just to max out turbos, but there's no really reason for that. You want to play this guy against uh, the matchups such as Shadow Paladins, uh, Thing Saber, anything that kind of wants to do Legion also because of the binding ability. Because you can kind of screw up their Legion turns, maybe have to make them call something to retire it so they can actually Legion, get rid of triggers and whatnot. His ability is that whenever he attacks and hits the Vanguard, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it, then you choose two cards in their, bind zone, uh, their drop zone and bind them face up for the rest of the game. Super, super annoying for a lot of people. But he's still just a nice solid unit. Even in set five, there's really nothing that kind of replaces him for brawlers right now because they haven't really made a they haven't really made another Nurakami first stride. But I just play him as two. You could play Rain Element Maidu as one of these if you want, just because of the whole combo it does with legions. But I just play two Zoras for now. Then we move on to the big man himself. We have True Brawler Big Bang Knuckle Turbo. This guy is absurd. His stride ability is once per turn, counter boss one, soul boss one, and then G flip anything. When you activate this ability, choose your vanguard, and for each card in your for each card in your heart with uh, Big Bang in their name, you can choose three units your opponent controls, whatever it attacks, and attacks them. So if you legion, so if you stride it over one unit and attack. You're only going to get, you get to attack three units. But if you stride it over a legion pair, you get to attack six units. Basically, your opponent's entire field. That is absurd. That is absurd. There's no reason to have that. And the other ability of turbo is that he gains power plus 5,000 for every face up turbo in your G zone. So even though he can G flip anything, if you G flip another copy of him, you get a little added bonus, but who cares about that? Because they're probably going to perfect shield their Vanguard anyway, and they're going to let all their rear guards die. The guy is just super strong, arguably one of the strongest strides in the game. You just play two, you play minimum of two, minimum of two. The guy is just absurd.
And then the big boss man himself, and that is Conquering Supreme Dragon, Conquest Dragon. I originally thought this guy was very meh, but I was proven wrong like so many, many times. His ability is once per turn, G Flip, a copy of himself, Persona G Flip. When you activate that ability, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row. Oh, and you have to have two face up. You have to have. Um, he has to be your second stride. This cannot be your first stride. Because it able to do, and able to do the ability, you have to. Yeah, just think right here. There's a, a hidden generation break too. But his ability is when you use his effect, it's act once per turn. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row and retire. Then your whole front row gains power plus five thousand for every empty rear guard circle your opponent has in their front row. So if Another reason why you play Skyhell Dragon. If both of their front rows are retired when you activate his ability, your entire front row gains power plus 10,000. So he's a 36. And again, this harps on why I play so many 11k attackers in my deck. They all become 21s. This is absurd for no cost. And it's even more devastating in this deck because generally this guy comes after you did nothing but retire rear guards for the entire game. So they're probably low on resources anyway. The card is just absurd. And again, this deck is still absolutely playable in this meta. I've called it the best deck that no one's playing in Japanese and English. It's not seeing that much play anymore, but it's still absolutely playable in this meta, and it will win you games by far. So that's pretty much what the deck profile looks like, and that's what I've been using this whole time. If you have any questions, remember to put them in the comment section. Remember to comment, rate, subscribe. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This is Team Dreadnought, and we'll see you next time.